So we're going to have a look at Matthew Court's golf swing. Uh, Matthew was the recent winner of the 2016 Cornish Festival Pro-Am. Uh, the tournament was played over three golf courses, Carlion Bay, Travose, and here at St. Anadoc. Uh, he shot eight under par, which in some fairly horrendous windy conditions was a fantastic score. Uh, this is the eighth hole. It's a par three at St. Anadoc of 150 yards. He's hitting something in the region of a seven or an eight iron in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Matthew's swing through in its entirety and then have a look at it in more detail and study some positions and movements that uh, he does particularly well that we can all learn from. So if we take him back to the impact uh, to the address position, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, he aligns the shaft of the golf club with his lead shoulder. So you can see the graphic here, if I put that up the line of the shaft, it, it's aligned with the center of this club head arc, which is the lead shoulder. And that enables him to have a, a one-piece takeaway. He just simply moves his arm and the club shaft away from the ball, and uh, it simplifies that movement incredibly. So if I get rid of that line, what I'm going to do is, is we're going to put some markers on his hips, and these will help us to monitor and understand how he utilizes his body weight uh, in the backswing and through through it in the in the downswing through impact. So if we move uh, his uh, his swing away from the ball now, you'll start to see that he doesn't move laterally away from the ball. He stays very central over the ball and just rotates his spine, um, and, and and is therefore able to uh, keep in a very solid position over the ball here. Now, one thing that Matthew does particularly well, and you'll notice amongst other tall players and elite amateurs is that they start to transition their weight into their lead side before the backswing is complete. So if we just move him up to the top of the backswing here, you can see a very subtle movement there where he initiates the, uh, the, the downswing or the top of the backswing and the downswing with that lateral movement. And that enables him to maintain and create this lag angle between his lead arm and the club shaft and maintain that lag angle well into the downswing and he will only reach the point of full extension after the ball has been struck. So as we move uh, his golf swing down now into the downswing, you'll see that he's already getting his body weight well in front of those hit markers that he was in at address. He's getting his weight well onto his lead side. And from about this position here, he's starting to actually rotate his body towards the target and clear his left hip, which creates the space for his arms to swing into impact. Now, if we just pause him at impact here, one of the things you'll notice if I add a couple more hit markers is that he's moved significantly towards the target. He's very st stayed pretty stationary with his head, but he's moved his body weight and his hips well towards the target, and that enables him to get the low point of the club head arc to be well in front of the golf ball. Now, that's very important because he basically is able to hit the ball and then the turf. So he reaches the optimal impact position here, and you can see that if I add this line of tension, which connects one end of the main lever, the club head, to the other end of the main lever, uh, his lead shoulder, which is the center of the club head arc. You can see here that his, his arm and his, his lead arm and the club shaft are well in front of that line of tension. So he's maintained the tension in the main lever until after the ball has been struck. So that's rather like a, a car pulling a trailer. It's just kept the tension in that connection so the trailer just follows the car as long as it's in a forward gear all day long and it stays perfectly under control. And that's exactly what his hands are doing here. They're leading the club head through impact. So the club head just follows uh, the direction given to them by the, the hands. Now, if we move him forwards a couple of frames here, you'll see that he actually only reaches the point of full extension when the club shaft is aligned with his lead shoulder well after the ball has been struck. So let's just move him back to impact and just study this position. This is the optimal impact position. This is the position that all tour players and elite amateurs reach, and it enables them to control the club head until after the ball has been struck. And the best way to practice this position is with the DST compressor. The DST compressor is a, a club that we uh, brought out in um, January last year, and already 17 of the top 25 players in the world are using it to warm up with and to uh, to train with in their, tr in their warm-up routines. Um, it enables the player, or it forces the player, to locate, train, and perfect the optimal impact position. 
So I would urge you to go and have a, a look at this, uh, this video here. You can click on the link here and it will explain what the DST compressor does and how it will help you uh, improve your impact position. But congratulations, Matthew. It was a fantastic week uh, on your, uh, the win at the Cornish Classic. Um, we look forward to seeing much more of your golf swing throughout the 2016 season.